All right, lucky last. What, they saved the best till last, Kathy. Stop, you're embarrassing me. Um, it's an honor to stand and speak to you all today, and um, I'd like to start by asking everyone a question, a very important question. Who here likes chocolate? Put your hand up. Keep your hand up if you prefer Brussels sprouts. All right, so that's 950 to two. Um, and that just underlines the fact that some things are just better than other things. Chocolate is just better than Brussels sprouts, and home is just better than hospital. And we have a home program at our hospital called Wallaby Ward, or Hospital in the Home, when your patients need hospital care, but not a hospital room. Now, we look after a lot of children. We have 50 virtual beds, and which means we visit 50 patients in their homes or schools every single day. And that equates to about 20,000 visits a year. We have a whole team of people doing this, from doctors, some of whom look like me, uh, nurses, physiotherapists, a pharmacist, a social worker, even a dietitian. <laughs> and you might think with all of these riches that I would be content, but I'm never content. I always want more. And what I want more of is more home care for children, different home care for children, better home care for children. And this is really where, by asking questions and researching the answers to these questions, we can do all of these things. So I'm going to tell you a story, and this story is really on behalf of all of the team that work in hospital and the home, and all of the very small but uh, uh, intensive, enthusiastic group that I lead, um, which have big ideas to cite the small size of our group, um, uh, to whom I'm indebted. Um, and this is a story about a bunk bed. Well, it starts with a bunk bed. So this is a story about um, when we bought our two daughters a bunk bed. And as you can see on their faces, this is a number of years ago, we were parents of the year. Um, this is a title we very quickly lost, because literally three days after buying this bunk bed, Maisie fell off that ladder that she's standing on and ended up in the emergency department. <laughs> now, Maisie was very happy in the emergency department because she likes climbing on things. And she likes climbing under things. And she very much likes nose medicine, which made her a little bit loopy. But then she was admitted to hospital. And she very quickly became lonely and bored. And she missed her family. There were tears. And she was frankly exhausted by the whole experience, although nothing stops her from wearing a princess ballerina dress. <laughs> but I want you to imagine that Maisie is your child, or your grandchild, or a child that you know. And keeping that in mind, think about what if kids could avoid hospital admission altogether? So we have a world-class hospital, Royal Children's Hospital. We have world-class facilities, world-class care, world-class staff. But what if your child that you're thinking of, let's call him Max, turns up to the hospital and he does need hospital treatment, but instead of having treatment in the hospital, he could completely avoid the hospital and have his treatment back at home? Doesn't that sound amazing? So what do you think our medical colleagues thought of this brilliant idea? Well, there was a whole range of responses, ranging from the rather unenthusiastic to the very unenthusiastic. And so we realized that what we really needed to do was start small and start with baby steps. So the very first thing that we did was we engaged just one emergency department physician, Sandy Hopper, and said, Sandy, send us a few patients your way, our way, will you? And Sandy said yes. So then the second step was after Sandy had sent a few patients to hospital in the home, was to engage our medical colleagues and say, look what Sandy's done, look at the results, and to educate them about the pros and cons of going home. And then the third step was to ask them very nicely if they would send some patients home that they felt comfortable with. So nothing out of the ordinary, just what they felt comfortable sending home. And this set the scene for the world's first randomized trial of home versus hospital care in children, which is called the CHOICE trial. This was co-supervised by my also partner in crime, Franz Babel, in the emergency department. And it was care at home or inpatient for children in emergency. So here comes Max again, and he walks up to the hospital. I don't know where his parents are. Um, and soon enough, he, in the emergency department, he makes it into an emergency bay. And the nurse examining him sees that his hand is very pink and swollen and hot, and she recognizes this as a skin infection, cellulitis. She sees that it's pretty severe, that he needs IV antibiotics, so she calls a researcher. 
Now, this researcher is my erstwhile PhD student, the wonderful Dr. Leila Ibrahim, and she says, Max, would you like to be in my trial? And Max said, what trial? And Leila says, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so this is a trial, which means we're going to randomize you, which means flip a coin, and then that will decide, heads or tails, whether you, Max, heads come into the hospital, or tails go home to your own bed, not a bunk bed. Um, and Max said, that sounds great. Leila said, great, let's do it. So she flipped the coin, and Max was randomized to go home. And we randomized almost 200 children from the age of six months to 18 years, and every shape and size and age of children in between, uh, to be enrolled in this study. And I'm grateful to all the families and patients who agreed to somebody flipping a coin to decide where you would be treated. Um, and then we looked at our outcomes, and we looked at several outcomes, and what we were really hoping was by looking at a number of different outcomes that there would be a balance between hospital and the home. Um, and so the first outcome we looked at was obviously treatment success, and to our somewhat surprise, it was better at home. And we looked at adverse events, better at home, hospital costs, sorry, um, child satisfaction, better at home, hospital costs, better at home, costs to the families, better at home. And finally, parental quality of life, which can only be measured in cocktails, better at home. <laughs> so this was actually an amazing result that we didn't expect. Literally everything we looked at was better at home. And because this was a world first trial and because it was an amazing result, as Cathy said, we did get um, uh, published in the Lancet Infectious Diseases. And this was a, a great honor because not only did we get published, but also um, they designed the cover art after our study, this beautiful marble drop which I couldn't help but animate. And the, <laughs> that was my, my hobby. Um, um, and although um, there were three studies in um, that issue of the uh, Lancet Infectious Diseases, only one study got the cover art. Sorry, Steary. <laughs> So what this whole evening has been about is about translating research into practice. So we started with a patient, and from the patient, we got a question, and from the question, we got a study, and from the study, we got outcomes. And then the final step, which is too often missed in research, is to translate those outcomes back into patient care. Now, it's quite simple to translate um, patient care from research at the Children's Hospital. The study was done here. People are very enthused and research-orientated and research-friendly at this hospital. So now, if a child like Max, comes into the hospital with severe cellulitis, needing IV antibiotics, the default pathway is straight home. But it's not enough just to have the default pathway for the children at this hospital. We want to disseminate this um, uh, finding far beyond the four walls of this hospital. There are many ways to do this, but one of the really successful ways in which we're currently just on the cusp of doing, because the update for the cellulitis guideline um, in the paediatric uh, clinical practice guidelines is to get research studies into this um, pediatric uh, guidelines. Um, this was a guideline which is used by um, the emergency department and originally was just for the children's hospital, but a few years ago it became statewide and then it's just now become the whole of the eastern seaboard, uses and endorses these guidelines and soon hopefully the whole of Australia. And then before, like Cathy says, we go for absolute world domination, I want you to actually hear from the patients and parents that this actually affects, the people who matter. As well, a hospital isn't a place that I don't, I don't think anybody wants to be in and... Um... It's not much fun because I miss my family. I miss my dog and my friends too. The good news is that I can finish my treatment at home. Yay! They were able to come out to the house every day. Um, all their questions and um, things that we were nervous about was never a big issue for them. You know, you've still got to pay bills, you've still got to, you know, simple things like mowing the lawn and things like that. Um, they've got normal interactions with their siblings, they go to school. When she was able to come home, then sort of everything was just so much easier. And back into her own bed and into her own environment, I think, I think helped her yeah. to recover a lot quicker. And for us too. <laughs> when I'm feeling even better, I can go back to school even though I'm still a patient of the hospital. But the best thing is, I'm home again with my family. Bye. And um, I can't begin to show our gratitude to that unit. <laughs> so, so apart from being an advert for our services, um, I think that really tells, says, says it all. 
So finally, what next? So as I said at the beginning, I'm never content. I'm always after more. And so the first thing that we wanted to do more was actually just do another study in the emergency department with the same team. Um, and we um, uh, originally, that first study was funded by the RCH Foundation. We now have another study um, also funded by the Foundation on children attending uh, the emergency department with urinary tract infections. Um, the, um, we're also looking at new conditions, such as um, surgical conditions. We're not quite at the stage of doing appendicectomies on the kitchen table, but watch this space. Um, we're um, keen, very keen and um, at the forefront of implementing new technology, so telehealth and home monitoring um, to give our kids better quality of care in the home. And then finally, new populations, such as kids with autism, newborns, uh, kids, um, indigenous kids who are often groups who are in the too hard basket for home care. So finally, back to Maisie. What happened to her? Well, she did get home, and she did get back to ballet, and she finally got back to her own bed. And so I'd just like to finish by saying, home, like chocolate, it's just better. <laughs> Thank you very much. And